Welcome everyone. We will be having a discussion on occupational diseases in today's presentation. So, what is the definition of occupational disease? The term occupational disease covers any disease contracted as a result of an exposure to the risk factors arising from a work activity. So, basically for any economic activities, if a person is engaged in a pornite and because of that work, he oblique she enters into a disease mode as in some kind of some kind of illness medical illness that is what is known as an occupational disease so this is as far as the protocol of 2002 as osha convention conventions in 1981 occupational safety and hazard conventions 1981 the International Labor Organization, ILO, Employment Injury Injuries Benefits Recommendation defines occupational disease as following. Each member should, under pressure condition, regard disease known to arise out of exposures to substance and dangerous condition in process and trades or occupation as occupational diseases. So basically, anybody working working in lieu of money, in lieu of economic benefit, so as to sustain his or her life or career per se. And because of that working condition, if he or she is exposed to certain medical illness, because of that reason, is known as, defined as occupational disease. So two main elements are present in the definition of occupational disease. One, the causal relationships between the exposures in specified working environment of work activity and a specific disease. So there is a basic cause and effect relationship between the exposure of a certain work environment or a work activity. Second is the fact that the disease occurs among a group of exposed persons only, specific to such kind of industries, such kind of activities, such kind of work. Anybody and everybody who is pursuing such activities will be exposed to certain particular diseases with the frequency above the average morbidity of the rest of the population and that is what defines the occupational disease. One is a cause and effect relationship and it is randomly or rampantly found into similar organization, similar occupation, similar industries, similar work that have an above average morbidity rate. So general criteria for identification recognition, recognition of OD is not organizational development but occupational disease. The causal relationships <coughs> is established on the basis of clinical pathological data, occupational background and job analysis, identification and evaluation of occupational risk factors and of the role of other risk factors. Epidemiological and toxicological data are useful for determining the causal relationships as in causal relation is cause and effect why does this particular disease occurs in the first place between a specific occupational disease and its corresponding exposure in a specific working environment or work activity as a general rule the symptoms are not sufficiently characteristics to enable an occupational disease to be diagnosed as such without the knowledge of pathological changes engendered by the physical chemical, biological or other factors encountered in the exercise of an occupation and that is what needs to be understood in the very first place. Let us understand what are the else general criteria for occupational disease. It is therefore normal that as a result of an improvement in the knowledge regarding the mechanism of actions of the factors in question, the steady increase in the number of substance employed and the quality and variety of suspected agents, it becomes more and more feasible to make an occupational diagnosis. As in, you can very well understand because of the similar exposures, similar kind of work conditions, uh, it becomes more or less uniform that people across the industry, across the country, having or doing a similar line of work will be more or less make an accurate diagnosis with a range of diseases recognized as occupational in origin is broadening. So <clears throat> we will start identifying them based on certain things. Number one would be strength of association, the greater the impact of an exposure 
on the occurrence or development of disease, the stronger the likelihood of causal relationship. Second would be consistency. Different research will have more or less similar conclusion. Third will be specificity. Occurs to a specific risk of factors result in clearly defined pattern over a period of time and consistent. Now this is what we are looking to go, go for. Next will be temporality or team sequ time sequences. The exposure of interest preceded the disease by a period of time consistent with any proposed biological mechanism. Biological gradient greater and level of exposures of greater the severity of the disease or the incidences. Next is biological plausibility from what is known as toxicology, chemistry, physical properties or other attributes of the studied risk or hazard. It makes biological sense to suggest that the exposure leads to the disease. Next is coherence. A general synthesis of all evidences leads to the conclusion that there is a cause effect relationship in a broad sense and in terms of general common sense. Interventional studies, sometimes a primary preventative trial may verify whether removing a specific hazard or reducing a specific risk from the work environment or work activity eliminates the development of specific disease and reduces its incidence there, thereby. So, let us understand what are the important elements for determining the causal relation. Number one would be an exposure effect relation, relation between exposure and severity of this impairment in the subject. Next is the exposure response relationship, connection between the exposures and the relative number of subjects affected. So you're working in a similar condition, what happened, what is an exposure? Now, if there is a similar kind of exposures, is it actually impacting every individual that is working or being exposed to one next would be how many if not everybody is been subjected to such kind of uh, illness or medical problem so what percentage is the uh, response to this why so what kind of people get affected adversely research and epidemiological studies have greatly contributed in this respect Better knowledge of the causal relationship has allowed us to achieve a better medical definition of occupational disease. As a consequence, the legal definition of occupational disease, which was rather a complex problem, is becoming more and more linked to a medical definition and criteria. So, legal provisions of compensation for victim, which varies from country to country, the Employment Injury Benefit Conventions indicates that the various possibilities regarding the form of identification and recognition of occupational disease entitling the workers to a compensation benefit, which might be as prescribed a list of disease comprising at least the disease enumerated in the conventions as in which all federal government will have recognized what kind of uh, diseases and what kind of professions are being associated and which will be regarded as occupational disease under a prescribed condition. Next would be including a legislation of general terms of occupational disease broad enough to cover at least the disease enumerated in the convention and the last will be prescribing a disease of list of disease in conformity with, with clause A and complemented with the general definitions of occupational diseases and by other provisions of establishing the occupational origin of disease not so listed in manifesting themselves under the condition of difference that comes along with it. So let us understand the definition. Occupational disease are adversely adverse health condition in human beings. The occurrence or the severity of which is related to the exposure of the factors or the jobs that was one been exposed to in the work environment such factors may be physical like heat noise radiation may be chemical like solvent pesticide heavy metals and dust may be biological like tb hepatitis b virus hiv human immunovirus immunodeficiency virus ergonomics for example improperly designed to or work area, repetitive in motion, psychosocial stressors, lack of control over work, inadequate personal support, and mechanical. These mainly cause work accidents and injuries rather than the occupational diseases thereby. 
So what is the characteristics of occupational disease? The clinical and pathological presentation are identical to that of a non-occupational disease. For example, asthma. <clears throat> occupational disease may occur after the termination of the exposure. So once have been exposed and probably you have left it around. The exposure has been no longer been, you the person is not no longer been exposed or he or she might be doing in a different kind of industry job. Example, asbestos related mesothelomia, cancer affecting in a long, lung and abdomen, which can occur maybe after three decades or four decades of their exposure. So something which is which has to be taken into consideration. The clinical manifestation of occupational disease are related to the dose timings of exposure. Example, a very high airborne of concentration elements merc mercury is acutely toxic to the lungs and can the pulmonary failure. So while at a lower level of exposure, elementary mercury has no pathogen effects. In. Whereas it can have a chronic adverse effects on the central and probably in the periphery nervous system. Occupational factors can act in combination with non-occupational factors to produce diseases. Exposures to asbestos, five-fold increase in the lung cancer or a long-term smoking cigarettes increase by the risk by, by 50 to 70 times. So diseases due to physical agents are heat, let's say heat, apraxia, exhaustion, syncope, cramps, burns. Let's say disease due to cold would be trench foot, frostbite. Diseases due to light, let's say occupational cataract, minus nystagmus. Occupational or diseases due to pressure would be caisson diseases, ear embolism, blast. Diseases due to noise would be occupational deafness. Diseases due to radiation would be cancer, leukemia, aplastic, anemia, pancytomania. Mechanical factors would be would lead to injuries and accident. Electrical electricity will lead to birth. Gases will lead to let's say carbon. Um, uh, what are the diseases due to chemical agent? Let's say carbon dioxide, monoxide, cyanide, nitrogen, ammonia, hydrochloric acids. So dust will be pneumoconiosis like coal dust, silica, asbestos, iron, cane fiber. Similarly, for metal, chemical, biological agents, we have so many of toxicity from metals, so many of acid and alkalis and chemicals, so many of leptospirosis, anthrax, tetanus, and etc. against biological agents. So we have occupational cancers in terms of skin, lungs, and bladder, occupational dermatitis like a dermatitis and eczema and psychological origin origin would be industrial neurosis and hypertension so pulmonary heart, uh, dust diseases is what happens pneumoconiosis is disabling the pulmonary fibrosis that results from the inhalations of various types of inorganic dust such as silica asbestos coal talc china clay and so on and so forth silicosis is crystalline silica that is silicon dioxide occupational for example, mining, stone cutting, shaping, glass, ceramic manufacturers, iron and steel industry affects your lungs. Believe me or not, it might take approximately a decade to develop or even sometimes less, less, but prolonged exposures to higher concentration of dust actually it becomes a root cause of it. Presentations would be in dysnopia on exertion, pulmonary debugging. TB and cardiac or respiratory failure, impaired TLC or total lungs capacity, diagnosis is x-rays, no storm appearances, progressive disease and converts to tuberculosis. So preventions and the regular physical ex examination is the only way out. Similar for asbestosis, inhalation of asbestos, asbestos fiber, occupation is mining, extraction, exposure to asbestos, insulation, making of asbestos clothes. Manufacturing of asbestos, cements, and other products, vinyl floor tiles, and break and cloth lining. Sign, signs and symptoms would be interstitial fibrosis of lungs, plethora thickening, calcification, bronchogenic carcinomic, pleurals, peritoneal mesodermia. Similarly, for progressive dysonomia on exertion, cough, expectoration, chest pain. 
sinuses and clubbing of fingers. So basically what we are looking into is a lot of exertions on your lungs area and it becomes, makes your lungs much more weaker. So that is what we are looking for it. Asbestos bodies in your spuntum, spuntums, asbestos fiber coated with the fiber, x-ray finding, ground glass appearances in the lower two third of the lungs. Again, the progressive diseases only can be helped with prevention and periodic ex examination. This is what a healthy heart and a mesothelmia heart is all about it. Look, the lower part of the heart, uh, lungs, sorry, lower, lower part of the lungs is completely invisible and that is because of the asbestos that comes around here. Lead poisoning. Occupational usage is industrial, storage batteries, glasses, shipbuilding, printing and pottery, rubbers, whether it's non-occupational like gasoline, drinking via lead pipes, paints, toy, etc. and etc. What are the modes of absorption? Inhalation of fumes, inhalation of dust, ingestion through food and drink through your mouth, and skin absorption or the tetrithyl lead. So there are three ways of going it: inhalations, ingestion and skin absorption. Clinical features are less than 72 micrograms per 100 ml. Clinical signs and symptoms, what are inorganic lead, like in plumbism, abdominal colic, obstinate constipation, loss of appetite, blue lines on the gums, anemia, wrist and foot drop. Where the organic lead would be insomnia, headache, mental confusion, delirium. Lead poison is co copro firing in urine as in screening test, amino limolic acid in urine, lead levels in blood and urine, prevention is substitution, isolation, local exhaust, exhaust ventilation, personal protection. We're talking about everything in the health education. So occupational cancers are carcinogenic agent because of arsenic, chromium, nickel, polycyclic, aromatic hydrocarbons, coal tar, benzoyl. Similarly, for organ affected with skin and lead, lung, lung and nasal sinus, skin, skin, scrotum, lungs, etc. and etc. We'll talk about dermatitis. What is in respect to occupational dermatitis? Now, what is happening with the skin problem is the heat, cold, moisture, friction, pressure, x ray, acid, alkali, solvent, grease, tar, pitch, fungi, leaves, vegetable fruits actually get exposed to your skin. Classification is primary irritant or sensitizing substances. Prevention is pre-selection, protection, personal hygiene, periodic assessment thereby. This is what we are looking into it. Radiation hazard is exposures, manufacturers of radioactive plants, paints, paints of luminous dials of watches, mining of radioactive workers, effect of radiation prevention and so on and so forth. Let us talk about prevention of occupational disease. Prevention of occupational disease is the best method to fight all occupational hazards. First and foremost thing is the medical measure. It's all about pre-placement examination, periodic examination, regular ex uh, examination, medical and healthcare services, notification, supervisions of working environment, maintenance and analysis of record, health, education and counseling. Then comes the engineering measures are design of the building, good housekeeping, general ventilation, substitutions, dust, enclose, isolate, local exhaust ventilation, protective devices, environmental mo monitoring and research thereby. So legislation wise, policies and regulations of factories, workers, places, health of workers, example insurance, sickness and so on and so forth. With this, I come to an end of this presentation. Thank you for watching this video.